Thank you for coming, everybody. Really uh, want to thank everyone for being here today. Every New Yorker is familiar with those ubiquitous street uh, news racks, those sidewalk news racks. And in true New York fashion, we have a love-hate relationship with them, right? We love the convenient access to our favorite local papers. What we don't love is that they're frequently neglected, vandalized, tipped over, broken, filled with garbage, causing sidewalk congestions, or just plain eyesores. And by the way, a lot of them aren't newspapers. They're all kind of commercial enterprises. Like a lot of things, New Yorkers have just been used to living with them for a long time, and the city hasn't had the ability to do much about it. There hasn't been very much enforcement on it because the city doesn't have very many tools at its disposal. But it doesn't have to be this way. Today, I'm introducing legislation that would put in place better regulations that would clarify and strengthen the rules around the use of sidewalk news racks. Introduce, introduction 810 directs the Department of Transportation to develop standards regarding the manner in which news racks shall be placed or installed. It gives the DOT the ability to create design standards regarding the size, shape, and appearance of news racks. The legislation updates the siting regulations to include that a news rack shall not be placed within four feet of street furniture, within five feet of a bike station, eight feet of a bike rack, within five feet of DEP water protection uh, sampling stations. It also clarifies that news racks should not be used primarily for advertising or promotional purposes other than announcing the name of the website or publication that the news racks for uh, publications would be able to display the logos on the doors of the spaces uh, that are offered not to exceed 50 percent of the door space and this is an important part the owner must also affix to the news rack their name, address, telephone number, and email address in a readily visible location. A lot of uh, these news racks aren't even necessarily owned by the publication, but until now, we haven't known who's responsible for them or who to contact if there's a problem with them. If they're broken, abandoned, filled with garbage, that's gonna change with this legislation I want to thank Council Member, Council Member Sandra Ong for being the prime co-sponsor of this legislation. And I want to thank all the different stakeholders that are here today. There's a lot of momentum around this legislation. Conference, I must say that now it makes perfect sense that Sandra Ong will be a major co-sponsor of this bill. All you have to do is walk along Main Street and Roosevelt Avenue and it's down to one lane, the, the, the critical bottleneck. Uh, those of you that visit Flushing will know what I'm talking about because there's barely any room for a street event. So we are delighted that the council members are, are taking this initiative and kudos to all of you. Well, thank you so much, Wellington. Woo! Woo! Thanks, Christine Berte, yeah. the co-founder of Check Peds, an organization that advocates for pedestrians and, and others on the west side. She's also the, the co-chair of the CB4 Transportation Committee. Today she's here in the check pets capacity and we're so thankful for her advocacy on this and many other issues. Thank you. Well, uh, you know, those uh, news rack have been here for a long time, but less and less used and more and more empty. And they have a tendency to tip over and block completely the passage of pedestrians. Say, pedestrians. There is 80% of the sidewalk in New York City are less than 12 feet wide. And we really need to reserve the space for the pedestrian right of way. So reorganizing those um, uh, bike rack, uh, news rack is critical to have one less thing to contest with. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah.
but we have to make sure that the sidewalks aren't clogged with uh, neglected news racks. Please welcome Barbara Blair. Thank you, Councilmember Butcher, very much. And thank you, I hope this is a first step uh, for DOT to really look at our sidewalks and passageways and do a top-down inventory of every single thing that is on the sidewalk, including links and vendors and wayfinding totems. There is so much furniture right now on the sidewalk that they're becoming impassable. The Garment District has 220 million pedestrians a year, and these new news boxes are eyesores, they're not maintained, they're out of compliance in terms of siting, so this legislation we hope will be a first step in really rationalizing how our sidewalks are used. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you so much, Barbara Blair. Advocating for a more livable New York oriented towards pedestrians and cyclists and others. You got it spot on. Thank you, Councilmember Bacher, for having us here today. Like you said, my name is Jackson Chabot, and this is? Emily Chingay. And I'll let, pass it to Emily to tell you a bit about where we come from for this issue. Yeah, so at Open Plans, we want to ensure that every New Yorker has access to accessible, safe, and joyful sidewalks and streets. Right now, our lack of regulation and enforcement has a detrimental impact on pedestrians, and every neighborhood deserves high-quality public space, and this means ensuring publications are accountable for what they put on our sidewalks, we need to pass this bill as soon as possible to guarantee accessibility for all. Absolutely, because we know, as several of the speakers have already highlighted, that some of our sidewalks across New York City are tiny. Others in parts of the city, such as Councilmember Botcher's districts, are o districts rather not not yet, baby, are over are overflowing with people. The New York City Department of Transportation has done a great job expanding sidewalks such as Eighth Avenue and public space such as Times Square. Let's increase the regulation and enforcement as well as create more public space for people. Standards help hold everyone accountable to ensure our neighbors have high qual a high quality of life. This bill will ensure our sidewalks are places for people. Thank you, Councilmember. Thank you very much. It's great to be here today to talk about organizing our sidewalks and really making it about access for pedestrians. As Barbara and those that spoke before me, the sidewalks are crowded with a whole lot of stuff. And to begin to chip away at thinking about how we can best organize that space, but also allow it to prioritize access for businesses, for residences, and of course for pedestrians to get from A to B um, is really important. So this is a great first step. And of course, we look forward to working with the council member and everybody in the council to really making sure that um, sidewalks are about people um, and not just, um, frankly, newsstands. So, thanks, Eric. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, you, you pretty much heard all there is from everyone, so I'm just going to say three things about them. I know that in, in past iterations of doing this, there's always been an argument about the First Amendment, and I would just emphasize that bills like this are not against the First Amendment. They're just about making sure that people have access to the public street and then they can move in a safe and healthy way at the same time. And the, uh, the second important thing, actually those are two, but the last important thing is enforcement. And what this bill does is it has some regulations in there that would help increase the ability to enforce the law and make sure that these things are well maintained and don't interfere with the public way. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Eric, and thank you, Eric staff. It's so wonderful to finally meet Christine Berté of CB4 in person. And I just wanted to say that for three years now, we've been floating the idea in Hell's Kitchen of repurposing these disused um, newspaper boxes. And wouldn't it be wonderful to repurpose them as little libraries or in some other capacity um, to get them out of our sidewalk scapes and into um, just a, a better use for them because of course they're made of plastic and it looks like though they're dirty they could be clean so i'm all for not just ditching them and um, thank you eric for all thank that you, you do for green spaces yeah. thank you Kat. council member botcher uh we're off to a great start with your intro uh it's going to make a going to really make a difference uh, in, in New York City and particularly in uh, your uh, district. I'm Dan Pesach, 34th Street Partnership. I've been around now for coming this coming summer 30 years, Barbara. 30 years. When I arrived, 
my boss, Stan Biederman, the first thing he said to me, do something about those sidewalk news boxes. <laughs> 30 years ago. 30 years ago. Because 30 years ago, in the 34th Street District, around Penn Station, Macy's, Madison Square Garden, Empire State Building, they all looked like this. You, you would not even want to touch any of them. Uh, they were falling apart, they were empty, there was garbage in it, and so I went to work in those early years to improve uh, the appearance and the uh, functionality of the news boxes in our district. And I just, I, I have a few stats. 34th Street Partnership operates 17 modular multi-vending news boxes in our business improvement district. The 17 modulars have 104, I know I'm getting technical here, one, 104 individual compartments for publications. We own and we manage, we paid for these 17 units a number of years ago. We do the maintenance, we, we do uh, the daily cleaning, we have a great relationship with the publishers who are involved, and it's 100% our expense. There's no advertising on any of these news boxes. We don't, we don't have paid ads on any of the news boxes. And currently we have 10 participating publications in the program from AM Metro to the China Press to Our Town and to the Jewish Post. And there are many, many more. We obey the laws. We do not go anywhere near crosswalks, intersections, curb cuts, and definitely not in bus stops. We're very careful in our siting and the installation and the proximity to other street furniture in our district. So we're off to a great start. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See, it might seem like a niche issue, like a small issue, but to me, this is about making New York a place where people really want to be. And we have to address all the things that get on people's nerves in New York, right? <laughs> the things that make New York just a little bit pre a little bit less pleasant. And this to me is low hanging fruit with this legislation. Thanks so much everybody. Bye. Bye.